Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up a Lord of Blight. Now, based off of previous trials with the Lord of Plagues, we're not going to be doing an undercoat. What we are going to be doing is just skipping that step and going straight to spraying on some Pallid Witch Flesh from high above. And once all that is done, we're then going to dry brush a white scar onto it and try to pick out the highlights. We don't want to do, I don't want to try the dark uh, undercoat this time so it won't show through, so I'm experimenting here. Now upon completing all the base coating and everything like that, we're then going to move on and get some Agrax Earthshade. Now what I'm going to try to do is use this to create shadows and depth early on for the undercoat over all the skin, the wood, and the wood on the shield, and any other place I think would be dark. Now we're going to start off with a watered down layer of Cadian Flesh Tone all over the flesh. We want it to be a little translucent so the under, uh, under layers will be able to show through. I then do a second layer because I'm just not happy with the first layer. Alright, so the plan is that I'm going to use this Contrast Gulliman Flesh and I'm going to layer it on. Now I want to keep it just for the shadows and stuff, so after painting it on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some reductive painting, where I'm going to take some isopropyl alcohol and then I'm going to rub it on the highlighted areas and remove the Gulliman Flesh. That is the plan, and so that the Gulliman Flesh will only be in the shadows. Now note, I am doing this without doing a gloss varnish on the model before this, which is supposed to protect it. I figured it would work, that it wouldn't be too bad. Well, the alcohol bl wiped out all the paint and bled all the way through to the base. And so, uh, I used the alcohol and I removed everything and then I redid the first two steps and I got it all the way back to the beginning. However, some of the detail has been obscured. Alright, round two, starting over. Okay, this time using glazing medium and Cadian flesh tone, I'll mix the two so it's a translucent and I will layer it on thinly, layer by layer. That's the plan going forward. Well, after all that layering is down, I'm now going to take Contrast Magos Purple and Technical Contrast Medium. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to coat the area in the Contrast Medium, and then I'm going to take the Magos Purple and then place it onto the spots where I want it strongest, and then I'm going to blend it in, in together so it looks like the color is fading, like I did with the Lord of the Plagues in the previous video. Now, unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to get it right this time compared to the first time. I don't know why. Okay, now in the artwork, this character seems to have like purple veins everywhere, all throughout his skin. So what I'm going to do to try to mimic that is I'm going to take the technical contrast medium and I'm going to coat him in it. And then I'm going to take little dabs of Mago's purple and just 
stab it in and hoping it spreads and flushes it out and so that's what I'm trying to do here. Now using Bestigore Flesh and Fugan Orange, what we're going to do is now we're going to paint all the boils and the open fat deposits. Yeah, the ripped open skin that has the fat deposits. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to place the Bestigore Flesh on all the boils all throughout the model and the open areas of fat. Then we're going to take the Fugan Orange and then we're going to coat it in that. And then we're going to take Bestigore Flesh again and recoat the fat and boil spots so that they shine through and poke out. Now with some worn fang brown, we're going to dilute it a little bit and then we're going to apply it to all the wood parts. Now here's the thing, when it's diluted enough you'll see the uh, highlights and undercoats that we added, which is good for some wood grain because it will show through all the details. Now moving on to the armor, we're going to take Lead Belcher and mix it with Caliban Green and create a greenish metal and we're going to apply it to all the metal parts that, well, all the green metal parts, so basically all the armor and such and such, but not the nails or the hammer. Now using just straight Lead Belcher, we cover all the metal pieces that we just want, basic metal. The hammer the spike thingy, all the little nails and such all throughout. Going back to Mornfang Brown, I then use it and coat all the leather, the little bag, and other leathery pieces. Using Agrax Earthshade, we're going to pour this all over the armor and the metal. I want to add some shading in, into the recesses for this. We will then begin highlighting with Mornfang Brown over the leather. The leather received a treatment of Agrax Earthshade and we will be doing a process of highlighting, then adding more Agrax Earthshade, then highlighting and back and forth until we get all the depth and color we want. Now we're going to take some Vallejo Pigment Burnt Umber, we're going to mix it with water and we're going to turn it into a paste, a thin paste, and then we're going to apply it all over the metal, specifically the green armor and other places where we want it to rust. We're going to make sure it's thinned down with enough water so we can apply a second coat if need be, but we just apply this wherever we want there to be like dirty rust or yeah, all over. Now using AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, we're going to spray this whole model down. Now here's a very important point, after uh, applying all that powder and stuff everywhere, if we touch it, it's going to smudge off and get on our fingers, and we could accidentally smudge it and spread it to other parts of the model that we don't want. So we need to tie it down, and this varnish will seal the model and seal in all the dust so it won't fly anywhere. Now we're going to take Ushabi bone, Ushabi tea. we're going to take this bone color and mix it with Lamenter's yellow and we're going to use this to make the, or to paint the maggots in this belly. We're going to start this, this makes a yellowish off-white, we're going to paint all the maggots inside with it. Now using lead belcher, we're going to dry brush the armor and all the metal pieces. Now for this we don't want to actually get uh, any of the paint or dry brushing into the middle of the green metal plates. We only want it to be on the edges. So we gotta aim and 
uh, angle our brush in just the right way so that it'll only hit the edges of the armor. As far as the regular metal pieces, that, that's fine, but we want to focus on the edges mostly. Using Fugan Orange, we're going to use this and coat all the maggots with it that are coming from his belly to show blood or fat. And then after that, we're going to take Mornfang Brown and Balthazar Gold and we're going to do a bunch of other details. We're going to use the Mornfang Brown to do all the ropes that are around the model. And we will also use the Balthazar Gold to start doing all the bells. I then use Mornfang Brown to paint all the ropes and strings or knots on these corpse heads. Using Agrax Earthshade, I then use it to coat all the brass. Using Ryza Rust, Nihilak Oxide, and Nurgle's Rot, I then use this to coat all the metal of the hammer and various other places of metal um, in this order. I want the Ryza Rust first, then the Nickel Oxide on any places that I may have put too much Ryza Rust, and then Nurgle's Rot to just to, well, it's Nurgle, so might as well. Then using Blood for the Blood God Technical, I'm going to apply it on all places where I believe blood should be coming out or flowing out, cuts, scars, wounds, open cuts, whatever. And we're going to use this and apply it. We'll also use it as a mask to cover up any maybe small mistakes that we may have made here and there. Now with Steel Legion Drab, Bane Blade Brown, and then Agrax Earthshade. We're going to use these and we're going to paint the bones and the skulls. I'm going to start with Steel Legion Drab, then we will highlight with Bane Blade Brown, then we will coat it with Agrax Earthshade, and then we will do another final highlight with Bane Blade Brown. And it gets this, makes really nice skulls. And now we begin final assembly using uh, some super glue with a little brush on it. I then attach the shield and then I use the base which I have made in previous videos and showed you how. I'll then attach it to there and then all we have left to do is edge the base with Abaddon Black and then that's it.
now at the end of things I now rate my work. I give it a 2 out of 10. This project was, for me, personally terrible. I had to redo it, the skin, I couldn't get it how I wanted, I patched my way through, uh, the metal, I screwed up on a lot of parts, the armor, like for some reason I dry brushed the sides, I couldn't even do that right. The hammer turned out good, the skulls and the heads hanging up there did good, the wood on in the back did good, but like, the shield was meh, the ground, I just, I don't know. I screwed up this time, I wasn't able to get all the pigment I wanted onto it. And I tried to cover up some of how the skin worked with blood effects and other stuff, but overall, I just, I didn't really do too good this time. Like, it may look okay now, but for my own personal, like what I, the vision I had in my head, and what I tried to accomplish, I could not accomplish it. And I made too many mistakes or issues on the way while painting it. And for that reason, I rate this very low. And I'm disappointed my, with my work. You know, I'm just going to sell it on eBay, get rid of it, and then get another one. Well, in the next episode, I'm going to be doing some scientific experiments on painting because I've not been able to get the skin right, and I want to be able to do a feculent normal, but I need to test some things out before I go for it. So next episode is for science. See you there.